here we will be evaluating the cost effectiveness. Is it really worth the dollar or is it really the worth the money we are spending it on any of those health technologies? That is one more component of HTA. It's not just clinical or cost effectiveness. It also has equity issues, distributional issues. It will have like social issues, social components. If you're a social scientist, you can kind of contribute. Whether it's when you introduce a any health technology into the field, whether it really works or not. So that aspect is also kind of assessing the health technology. So it's a health technology assessment is a broader umbrella. I mean, at least if you know this concept by this time, using, I mean, attending this symposium, I think that would be really great. So now, uh, specifically, I mean, this session, I'll briefly focus uh, some of the aspects of only economic evaluation per se, and uh, some of the introducing some of the specific terminologies as such, what we exactly mean by this economic evaluation, why we need to do this, or uh, thing. In any industry, I think most of you are from MBA, right? We are looking for efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. What is an efficiency? Efficiency, types of efficiency. It will be a bit more theoretical or a bit more academic in nature, My the, the, most of my slides, sir. We all know, we all have our resources are much, much limited in all aspects. It could be money, material, our resources or even the items, everything we have very scarce resources, including the time. Because even the time you are like decided to stay over here rather than going out or doing something else. Even the time itself is a resource. You are investing your time to stay over here to at least learn something so that could make your... So we need to make choices and though the resources are scarce, our wants are unlimited. Even within the same time you would have sit here, you would have watched or someone even looked at their mobile, what we can actually prioritize for each of our time when we are doing it. So, there are like unlimited wants and needs, but the efficiency is to get most of what that is available. That is the efficiency, right? And how do you do that? There are like several aspects. One thing is first, whatever the resources you have, don't waste it. That itself is like kind of, you are maximizing your efficiency. So in terms of if you want some of the theoretical topics for the types of efficiency, there are mainly three types of efficiency. One is technical productive and allocative efficiency. Technical efficiency mainly deal with do not waste resources. Produce your goods or outputs at the least possible amount of resources where to produce the final goods. The productive efficiency is to produce each output at the least possible cost or even the combination of outputs to produce the least cost. Like if you want to treat a patient, like do you need like 10 doctors in a PHC or like even one doctor is enough? Or you want, like te you want to place like 10 nursing staff, I mean, even in terms of human resource. Or in a single place, whether you need to keep like single MRI sufficient for an institute or you need 10 MRIs. Like in terms of resource fine-tuning, I mean, even th that will help in terms of productive uh, efficiency as such. Then allocative efficiency. Here allocative efficiency is not allocation, not to get confused with the allocation and allocative efficiency. Here allocative efficiency means give the people what they want. See, for example, even if you take the recent example of even vaccination, if you don't give what actually people want, people will not receive it. Even though you may give vaccines for free, but many people are not reluctant because of various misconceptions. So you need to, I mean, the other aspects of social and behavioral aspects of HTA need to act on, to introduce and work on and doing that. So that component constitutes the allocative efficiency where you produce types and amounts of goods which people actually value it. For any healthcare, industry the main thing is efficiency where you are maximizing the output with limited uh, uh, resources that mainly by telling in terms of improving your productive efficiency like how best we can achieve for, for a given objective like for a if you want to give a service uh, for hiv testing you provide hiv testing at a single place or you create a mobile van which one would be more beneficial so that is a consideration in terms of productive efficiency. Or in terms of allocative efficiency, like should we allocate more resources to the neonatal care or geriatric care? Where we need to allocate our resources, limited resources. So answering such questions will be kind of allocative resources. Once you want to say you are, we need to evaluate this efficiency, how do we evaluate? At least in terms of economic way, you have the method called as economic evaluation. What is economic evaluation? all is about. If you go, want to go by the rest, Professor Drummond's uh, definition, it is a comparative analysis of alternative courses of action. Right? 
considering both its costs as well as outcome. At least from this session, at least if you can get this definition or like understanding of what actually we mean by economic evaluation, then I think I, my time spending would be worthy enough. That means what is an economic evaluation? You are comparing between two choices. What actually you are comparing? You are comparing both costs as well as consequences, right? <coughs> That's what is economic evaluation. So in terms of if you are comparing between two interventions, we usually call them as interventions or comparator. What we are comparing, if we are comparing both costs, which are usually measured in terms of monetary units, dollars, rupees, pounds, or whichever units. How we are measuring health outcomes? Usually in terms of either life year gains, quality adjusted life years, or even number of fevers prevented, number of diseases prevented in vaccine. Any kind of health outcome which we are preventing is, we can call it, I mean, when we compare and <coughs> do analysis consisting of both costs and outcomes, that sort of analysis we call it as economic evaluation. Then there are here, I'll just, I'm trying to introduce like some of the terminologies where, which are answered through these two methods. If you are evaluating both costs or consequences, yes or no, are you comparing between the two interventions and comparators, yes or no? If the answer is no, because I mean you are not comparing between two alternatives and you are examining only consequences, then it will be like outcome description. If you are examining only cost, but not comparing between them, then it is known as cost of illness. What is the cost of illness of diabetes? What is the cost of illness of COVID? What is the cost of illness of whatever the condi health condition you are looking at? What is the cost of illness of even giving one injection? Even everything is like, just you are describing cost, then such sort of studies are considered as cost of illness studies. But though you are including only costs or consequences, that is the partial evaluation you are doing, but you are comparing between two alternatives. That's what is your efficacy or effectiveness evaluation. If you are more clinicians or medical background, all our randomized control trials or interventional trials are doing this. Efficacy or uh, effectiveness evaluation where you are comparing only the clinical outcomes. Where you do the same for I mean, cost aspects, comparing between two alternatives, that we call it as cost analysis. However, if you are comparing both cost and consequences, but you are not comparing between two alternatives, then all such analysis we call it as only cost and outcome distributions. So the final aspect, what actually the full economic evaluations are these four different names. You might have, most probably you might have heard only this so-called this cost effectiveness analysis, but there are like four different types of this full economic evaluation where you are comparing both, comparing between the two alternatives and you are comparing both costs and outcomes. The first method, what is cost minimization analysis? As the word says, to minimize the cost. So it is just if you are measuring the cost in monetary units, in rupees, like how much is the cost for A treatment versus B treatment, but you assume that the outcomes are almost the same. Where, I mean, can you think of any examples where if you give like same medicine, but you're giving the medicine, but you're comparing between the two alternatives. If you give a pharma drug versus a generic drug, heard of this drug, at least names, right? Generics versus pharma. Drugs are same, but how about in terms of its costs? Much, much cheaper as compared to, but then, I mean, but you are giving the same drug. If you are doing an antihistaminic or anti-diabetic or anti-hypertensive, all are like same drug, but generics are costed much va lower value, I mean, costed lower price when price value and other things are different terminologies and have specific notions, but usually much cheaper than the pharma drugs. When you are, want to compare such sort of analysis, then you do this cost minimization analysis, which mainly evaluate the efficiency with cost per case analysis. The other term is cost benefit analysis, where you measure the cost in terms of monetary unit, but outcome also in monetary units. How can you measure an outcome in a monetary unit? is if you value a person's life in monetary units, how much value, how much worth you are. This is the actual way we assume and we calculate. That's what we call it as willingness to pay approach. How much, if we lose for, like if we extend the life for like another 10 years, how much productive that person could be. So that's what we examine in cost benefit analysis. So it mainly, if, and, and also, see, I mean, most of us, I mean, mainly for the policy makers and all, it'll be easy if you communicate in terms of money. If you put it money this much, and you will also get this much money. So it will be easy for any person to understand if you are comparing in the same scale of understanding. So you, there are various sorts of results you can uh, take. Net benefit if it is like take the ratio of cost by outcome, or if it is like return, to in, return on investment, or 
willingness to pay approach. Like there are like multiple ways you can report this cost benefit analysis as such. In the terminology cost effectiveness analysis, again, costs are measured in monetary units, but your outcomes are measured in clinical units. What could be the clinical units? Just hemoglobin A1C reduction or fever reduction or death avoidance. Any of the, if you measure outcomes in, some, in terms of clinical endpoints and you compare those costs and outcomes, then such analysis is called cost effectiveness analysis. The unit you measure is using same ICER. Already it has been introduced. It is like difference in cost divided by difference in outcomes. Some people considered a special type of cost effectiveness analysis as cost utility analysis, where you measure the outcome in terms of generic self-reported based measurements of quality of life. So like something like a quality, quality adjusted life year or disability adjusted life year, then we call that analysis as cost utility analysis. What could be the advantages of cost utility analysis rather than cost effectiveness analysis? One simple thing is you can compare a cancer with a simple bronchitis because you are measuring, your measuring units are same. How much money you need to avoid one quality? or how much money you want to avoid one daily. Rather than you say you need one lakh rupees to treat one cancer patient, you need like say 10 rupees to treat a simple bronchitis. But you cannot able to compare how much daily, you cannot, that cannot be comparable because you are measuring it in different units. To bring the uh, outcome measures in the same unit to make our assessments easier, so that's why this concept of cost utility analysis come where we measure outcomes in terms of either qualities or dailies. And here, I mean, some, there are like, some people even mention it as, as Madam was mentioning, ICUR as well, cost, uh, incremental cost utility ratios as well. Then if you ask me, how do you, what are the different methods are available when conducting this economic evaluation? One is, if there are like randomized control trials, you can collect both costs and outcomes along with the randomized control trials and you can do piggybacking on that and you can conduct studies. Or just using the observational data, real life data, you can collect both costs and outcomes and then you can collect economic, conduct economic evaluation studies. Using the modeling, what is the modeling? It's a simplistic thing, what is, I mean, the simplistic more thing which you can explain what is happening in the real world. In terms of like whenever you are building the model, the simp the, whenever I used to explain some people, I used to explain like running a randomized control trial in your Excel. Right? You are, instead of you are running a randomized control trial, you need to take patients and you need to treat them. But you run the same outcomes in your Excel or in your technical, I mean, whatever the technical, either Excel or R or Stat or whichever, there are like several tools and softwares available. Such, you can do it through economic modeling. Or you can use both like primary data as well as conduct economic modeling where on health problem you have like two interventions, get cost of A and cost of B and compare both these costs and consequences and conduct your economic evaluation. Just, I'll just try to tell you briefly like about in terms of if you want to take in any health program, there will be resources will be consumed, like it could be healthcare cost, patient cost and other sector costs. Once we measure that cost, what has actually changes in the health system and like how much resources are actually saved. You actually account your cost even in for that, like even if the money saved, even in terms of healthcare sector, patient family and other sector, you get that information. Then your, your actual total cost is actual cost you invested in producing that service versus minus of whatever amount you actually saved. That you can calculate the total cost and even you measure effects. If you are measuring outcomes, in t then if you say cost effectiveness analysis, you say total cost divided by your effectiveness measure. It's just cost effectiveness ratio, CER. Like something like life year saved, millimeter of mercury reduced or even number of patients treated. Then you can use this effectiveness analysis. Or if you're measuring it in terms of generic units, you can call it as cost utility analysis. Or if you're measuring in terms of monetary units, you can call it as cost benefit analysis. So why economic evaluation is important? Without any systematic analysis, you cannot make any decisions as well, and you cannot different, dif I mean, really identify what are the different uh, uh, alternatives you have. And again, with whose perspective you are doing this analysis? If you are like a hospital owner versus a government office policy maker or even as an individual payer or a public payer. Like under whose perspective you are making this analysis and considering all the relevant costs and outcomes according to their perspective. And without quantification, I'll just show like, I mean, if you have like two interventions like this, like something like a new wheelchair for elderly versus a postnatal care treatment. Whether if you want to invest in, if you're like you are a policy maker, where do you invest? You invest in wheelchair or you invest in postnatal care? 
both are like different things to compare it, but using some of this economic evaluation method, you can just get how much quality of life this is improving, how much quality of life this is improving. How many years of benefit you are finding with this, and what would be the cost of it? Similarly, what is the cost of it? So <coughs> you get cost effectiveness ratio, then you'll say if this is like 30,000 per quality and this is eight, no, eight, around 9,000 dollars per quality, then you can go ahead with this. So this will kind of tell you or guide you which interventions to choose and which interventions not to choose. Uh, this is like one of our research. We actually looked at uh, uh, gallstone uh, surgery, laparoscopic surgery, and which one is cost effective. And we kind of made through multiple effects. And we, I just want to say, I mean, we can even make this, I mean, even some of the surgical interventions or medical interventions, you can conduct this cost effectiveness analysis and come to the conclusion that which one is more cost effective. Whenever we say cost effective, we, uh, first question you, anyone need to answer is compared to what? At least, I mean, these are all some of the points which I'm trying to give. Whenever someone says something is cost effective, it's not the content of an individual drug or device. It has to be always in comparison to what? You need to first, I mean, if someone says my item is cost effective, you need to ask immediately as, as compared to what? So that, <clears throat> I mean, compared to something else only, you'll come to know whether something is cost effective or not. An economic evaluation is actually a comparative analysis comparing both courses of action in terms of cost and outcome. And it is not just merely an accountancy exercise as such, or even it's not just for only cutting costs. It is to evaluate about the service considering both benefit and cost, and to allocate resources more efficiently. So this is the purpose of any economic evaluation as such. Thank you.